I am Watanabe from the Data Science Center. I will give a presentation titled A Case Study of Issues Arising from Lines User Persona Systems Revamping. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Tetsuro Watanabe, and I am a member of the Machine Learning Solution Team to Machine Learning Office Data Science Center. As a machine learning engineer, I am currently working on development of a user persona system, a system to estimate the attributes of line users, which I will talk about. And I'm also involved in development and operation of the feature store system. In the past, I have worked as a data scientist at a game company, and I have also worked in the accounting industry. My doctoral research focused on evolutionary computation and multi-agent sim simulation, and I was also a postdoctoral researcher in completing my PhD. I'd like to introduce the flow of today's presentation. First, I will introduce the line user persona system. Then, as the main content of the presentation, I will introduce some examples of improvement that I have made through the revamping of this user attribute estimation system. Finally, I will talk about the future prospect of the user persona system, a future work. First of all, I'd like to introduce the user persona system at line. We are developing and operating a system to estimate the persona of line users. The user attributes or persona to be estimated here include not only demographic attributes such as gender and age group on the right, but also psychological attributes such as interests and concerns. The attributes are estimated using machine learning methods and the service logs of permitted users are utilized. The estimated personas used in various line services to deliver more useful contents to line users. Here are a few examples of how the estimated persona are used. First, let's take a look at the example of line advertising. With liners, external ad owners can set the target audience to which they want their ads to be delivered. You can specify the estimated attribute at the delivery target, for instance, RE 40s in age group. This allows us to provide value to both advertisement owners and line users which is beneficial to both. As an example of the use of estimated persona, let's take a look at official line account. When the owner of an official line account, such as stores and companies, send out push messages to multiple users who have registered as friends, they can set the target users to whom the message will be sent. The demographic attributes, gender and age group, can be used for this purpose. In practice, you can specify the gender and age group of your target audience via the official account management screen or the line messaging UI. Here is an excerpt from the line message API manual. In this way, it is possible to specify the delivery target in JSON. This feature of the line official account using estimated attributes allow the account owner to deliver contents to the right users, and users can get information that is more relevant to them. Line has a variety of services, and this estimated persona is also used effectively when launching new services online. In general, the amount of log data accumulated for newly launched services is limited. Therefore, even if you want to recommend an item of the service to a certain user, you cannot generate an appropriate recommendation because there is not enough log data yet. 
This is a so-called co-stack problem. However, since line has estimated persona data or user demographic data, it is possible to estimate the user's attributes and display the popularity ranking of items for that personas, making it possible to recommend a suitable items for each user. This is one of the strengths of Lines user's persona system, which avoids the cold start problem when a new service is launched. Here is a table showing the scale of the user persona system in terms of number of target users and the scale of the data. For example, in Japan, the number of monthly active users is approximately 89 million, and the number of dimensions of feature data used for machine learning is more than 4.8 million, making it a very large system. Next, I will introduce the data used in machine learning mechanism, which is the core of the user persona system. First, let's talk about the feature data that is input to the machine learning model. This figure shows the raw data of the feature store that we are developing and operating. In the user persona system, the green square sh that shows the Z feature are the services that goes across different features and the Z features are created in the following mechanism. On your left, there are users service logs where you get the permission from the users. And also you do the filtering and integrate only the data that they allow to use across services. By inputting these Z features, a machine learning model of the system performs learning and inferencing. Next, I will talk about the correct answer data that is required for model learning as well as feature data. In the user persona system, we mainly focus on the result of questionnaires conducted on accepted users as correct answer data. In some cases, another model was developed to prepare the correct answer data. Specifically, it is an automated process that uses manually labeled or annotated data. And this is the correct answer of the users who viewed. And this is rather a complicated system, so I'll introduce it with diagrams in the next slide. First of all, we need to determine which John the advertisement falls under, we manually label or annotate. For instance, if an ad is labeled as game, then it is labeled manually as game. And this is a correct data. And from the ads data, there is a machine learning model to predict the model for these ads. And this machine learning model is used for the ad which is not manually labeled to predict the jump automatically and put the label. And if another ad is not annotated, say it's a game jump, and then you can predict it from the model, and then the automatically labeled ad is clicked or tapped, then the user who clicked it is presumed to be a user interested in that game. For instance, a user who clicks on the ads automatically labeled game in the model for advertising will be given the label interested in games as ground truth. The label given to the user is now used as the correct answer data.
to create a machine learning model for the user together with Z feature to estimate the user's interest. And using the learn model for the user, it will eventually be possible to automatically estimate the attributes of all users who have not clicked on an ad and what jobs they're interested in. With this kind of system, there are cases in line where user attribute estimation is performed using ad click data as the correct answer data rather than survey result. And since only a small amount of work is required to annotate the ad, there is no need to conduct large-scale surveys. However, this two-tier structure makes it more difficult to tune the model, so it is necessary to build the model more carefully. Now, let's take a look at the history of the user persona system briefly. The first step was to implement the neural network code from scratch. Later, in order to handle large-scale data, a parallel processing mechanism using MPI was introduced. After that, full-fledged deep learning and machine learning is introduced, and the next slide will show you the transition. A conventional attribute estimation system runs on a Mesos cluster and is computed by the CPU. The model was written based on Theano. The system was running smoothly, but as time went by, the system became outdated and maintenance became increasingly difficult. In addition, we could not apply libraries such as PyTorch which is currently the mainstream in the machine learning field. And it became difficult, therefore, over the summer last year, we undertook a major renewal to tackle this issue. First, we installed a GPU cluster, then I thought about Mesos cluster, but then we migrated to Kubernetes cluster. In order to take full advantage of this environment, we developed and implemented a new in-house library for distributed processing called GI. This enabled us to use major deep learning libraries such as PyTorch in a Kubernetes cluster environment, including GPUs. However, through this major renewal, we have seen various points of improvement in the Belsona system. In today's presentation, I will discuss these improvement points and how we have solved them with some cases. Now, let's take a look at some of the improvements we have made through the renewal process introducing the cases. There are three main categories of improvement points. The first is to further improve the machine learning model. The second is to improve the system for stable supply of estimated persona and the monitoring. The third is to further improve the reusability of data and models. I'd like to introduce the three one by one. First, I'd like to talk about the further improvement of the machine learning model. As mentioned earlier, just after the renewal of user personal model last summer, we used to use a simple deep neural network shown in the figure. And the feature data collected across services was fed into a single embedding layer, and the embedding was performed in batch for input to the model. Earlier, when I talked about the scale of the persona system, I introduced the dimensions of the feature data in the table on the right. This number of dimension is, in other words, a dimensions input to this embedding layer. As a result of various trials to further improve the accuracy of model, 
The model structure was improved as shown in the figure on the right. First, we split the embedding layer so that the embedding process, which used to be done in a single layer, is now done separately for each type of services that is a source of the feature data. Furthermore, the model itself was changed from a simple deep neural network, a simple multi-layer perceptron, to a convolutional neural network using ResNet. With these efforts, we were able to improve the accuracy of model further. As a further improvement, we introduced the latest method called MLP Mixer, which was announced this March. In addition, we introduced the idea of probabilistically dropping out the input feature data on a per-service basis. And Line has a variety of services, but there are many users who have never used any of these services. We believe that this per-service dropout is a good simulation of the existence of such users. As a result of these model improvements, we were able to improve the accuracy of the model for most of the persona segment types as shown in the example on the right. As mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the user persona system is a large-scale revamping and it is used in various services throughout line and so improving the model accuracy has a great impact and is very important even if it is only a few percent improvement as shown here. And as you can see in the bottom of the graph, each attribute segment type consists of ten to dozens of segments and it is not an easy classification problem for machine learning. The fact that there are so many number of segments, it was not an easy task. And we've been able to improve the accuracy with such a large number of segments is a great achievement of our model improvement activities. Now, I have talked about the improvement of the model accuracy at the first point of improvement in the renewal. Next, point number two, stable supply of estimated attributes and system building for monitoring. I will talk about this. Why stable supply of model output is important? If it is not stable, what is the problem? So I will touch upon that. If output segment volume, which is the number of users that is estimated per attribute, fluctuate, it causes inconvenience to business side. I will explain this by using estimated attribute advertising or official account message delivery by using this graph. So when you look at a green dot as a day and the next day, which is blue dot, segment B volume the number of users that is estimated as attribute is decreasing by 30% in one day. So problem is just in one day, the number of users who are the target for advertising and message delivery is greatly reduced, like 30% even though ads owner does not change delivery setting at all, like a targeting segment B user, this amount of reduction is happening. And this gives disadvantage to account owners. This is why stable supply of estimated attribute is important. In order to solve these problems and have stable supply of estimated attributes, we have introduced several mechanisms and used them in combination. The first one is smoothing, 
which、uh, suppress the daily fluctuations. For example, this shows changes of segment points of estimated attributes. And we apply the smoothing, and the volume change b e c o m e smooth, suppressing daily changes was possible. By smoothing, there are several methods, including moving average and other methods. So, doing the smoothing, we can. Ensemble the multiple models, which is、uh, learned every day. So, the smoothing、uh, we can try to improve the accuracy of estimation. So, estimate accuracy、uh, can be、uh, improved. By、uh, doing this、uh, smoothing process simply, we developed the smoothing API. In smoothing API, you just、uh, specify a calculation method and the column. You can do smoothing, you don't have to write SQL query at all. With this, we could standardize, commonize smoothing process. And furthermore, we could simplify system implementation when we do it newly. So, we're talking about the stable supply. Now, next is a calculation of the segment volume. I will explain this by using sample data. So, segment volume changes like this graph. And、uh, let's assume this is after smoothing is applied. We still have these changes. If we apply volume calculation here, the segment volume after calculation becomes like this blue line. What kind of calculation was done? I will explain that in the next slide. The red arrow. Here on the left hand side shows a fluctuation suppression. It was such a big fluctuation. So, in this example, acceptable volume is set as plus and negative 20%. So, output estimated attributes are adjusted so that the exceeding fluctuations can be suppressed. At this、uh, orange arrow position, it is、uh, processed so that the segment volume will not become too small. In this example, setting is done so that the volume of each estimated attribute's volume would be at least 150,000 and、uh, gets adjusted so it will not go down from it. This、uh, works effectively for multi level tasks. In this task, multi segment will be assigned to users such as interest attributes. By using this volume cal calibration together with the smoothing, we can prevent the fluctuation that cannot be covered by smoothing. And、uh, we also stop the case like、uh, there will be. No target for delivering advertisement or official account messaging because of too small volumes. The third solution for stable supply of estimated attribute is gradual rollout. Model the structure or hyperparameter g e t freshed, and the new models will be gradually released. As shown in this graph on the left, the number of users will be increasing day by day over the course of the time. We will increase that and、uh, we assign the attributes that are estimated by fresh new models, and new models will be released slowly. 
We use this、uh, gradual rollout、uh, method and、uh, release the new models slowly. And this graph shows the volume changes of a certain estimated attribute segment. So, this、uh, red arrow shows the period of a gradual rollout. As、uh, you can see, it is、uh, moving from old model. On the left and、uh, on the right hand side, we have a new model, 100% new model on the right, and、uh, we move it little by little. By doing this, we can prevent the rapid change of estimated attribute segment volume at model renewal. In order to confirm the stable attribute estimation is done with these mechanisms, we need to monitor the output continuously. And we do it by using OSIS, that's an internal dashboard. In OSIS, when SQL query is described and registered, this visualization process will be done automatically. As scheduled. We can update it on an everyday basis, that's possible. Furthermore, we are developing mon monitoring system, Lupus, as a part of MLOps. This will make a visualization by dashboard easily, and it will be possible to automatically detect the abnormal output. Lupus Shows on the right hand side this、uh, red circle uh, means the abnormal output. As for this lupus, so if you want to have the detailed、uh, information, the next session it will give you that. The title is a Monitoring System to Accelerate the Lupus ML Ops. If you are interested in that, please stay and join the next Lupus session continuously. So far, I have explained the improvement point for attribute estimation system renewal. As the third point, I want to touch upon the enhancement of reusability of data and model. This diagram shows a typical data processing pipeline of attribute estimation system. So, pre process is done for future volume, and、uh, we prepare future value data after this pre process. And we combine this、uh, future value data with the correct data and divide them into each data. Sets such as a train validation and test, and we create a data set which we will put into the model. Model learning will be done by using this data set. A line has multiple tasks depending on the types of the estimated attribute, since the development period also are different. So, similar processes are implemented randomly, so there are many ways of maintenance cost and calculation cost. In order to solve this problem, we integrated data processing pipeline. First, we centralized the pre process for feature value data. And we made data set generation process as API. So each task can use the same mechanism to generate data set if correct data is prepared. For models learning and estimation, we made the same spec as API. So models learning and estimation can be executed by only calling this API. Line has a machine learning models library, and this is called as G models. 
GUI models has a various machine learning models. You can simply call out each model's learning and estimation as API. That's what the we are supporting. By introducing this GUI models API, we could enhance the reusability of data and model. And uh, furthermore, preprocess were put in the library called as Philip. As a result of that, other mechanism learning tasks than attribute estimation can do the preprocess of a feature value data easily. And we now can add a new feature value quickly. Development of this Philip is going on vigorously right now, so we can expect that the data-centric machine learning model development process will become more efficient in the future. After going through these improvements, we could build a more sophisticated attribute estimation system. At the end of this session, I want to talk about our future works. How can we use new models more easily? The GUI models, I just explained. Uh, this is a library. New models are added after confirming effectiveness. But if you want to add new models to GUI models, you need to describe everything, such as code for learning and estimation, code for preprocess before learning data. Data should be combined as a batch, or code for post-process after estimation. And put it in the G model. When you want to add a model, you need to implement all of these code, even though they are very similar processes, which means adding a model to the library required some efforts. So in the future, the common process in GUI models should be combined as core code and when you add a new model, you just implement the processes that are specific to that model. That's what we are planning. By doing so, you reduce the efforts to add a new model to GUI models. And the model verification or update can be done more actively. In today's session, reusability and the commonization are uh, mentioned repeatedly, including improvement cases that I have just mentioned. Maybe this is a basic idea for the software engineering, but for this kind of a large system, such as the attribute estimation system, or even for the most advanced machine learning system, reusability and the commonization are an important way of thinking. Now, at the end of this session, let me tell you our auto persona plan. With auto persona, anybody applying can do their original attribute estimation, which is specified to their services. On the service side, they just need label data, which is correct data, which is associated to a part of users. You don't have to prepare feature value data at all. When you hand a label data to Auto Persona API, you can create your original estimated attribute segment to all users, including non labeled users. All users. 
Internal process of auto personal API is the same as attribute estimation system that we have explained it today. Line has feature value data called Z features. So if it is line internal service, you can do model learning and uh, estimation using this feature value data. This original estimated attribute will be used to deliver useful content to each of line users. This concludes this session. Thank you very much for your attention.